welcome to this video where I'm going to have a look at habitable zones potentially around binary stars. So can double stars, binary stars, have a habitable zone? We know that a single star can, we live in one ourselves. So when we think about planets, we are probably quite familiar that they orbit stars. So an example, we orbit our sun, as does Jupiter. But that's not always the case, actually. You can have planets that don't orbit stars, but most generally, we think of as a planet orbiting a star. And they have habitable zones. So if you've got a single star, there's always going to be a zone around it called the habitable zone, where it's going to be the right temperature to have liquid water on the surface of the planet. We're lucky, we happen to reside in our habitable zone, but all other stars are going to have a zone around it, this sort of band where if you were located inside it, you'd have the right temperature to have liquid water on the surface. Now, many stars are not single in the sense that they are in binary systems, even triple systems, or even up to four, or even more. So they're not single stars, and there are planets orbiting these, these stars. And binary systems, so example here, you've got a planet orbiting on the outside, but can you actually get a habitable zone there or not? Let's have a look. But first we need to consider the different sorts of orbits. So you can have a planet that orbits around the outside of a binary system, which is the green orbit, or you can have a planet that orbits around one of the stars, and then the two stars orbit their common centre of mass. So it's a little bit more chaotic and unstable, but you do have two different sorts of orbits you can have. One goes around the outside of both stars, one goes around just one of the stars. This is quite important, especially when it comes to things like the habitable zone for that planet. So, you can get the habitable zone to exist outside both stars. So similar to if you had a single star, if you were around the outside of both stars, you have this habitable zone. So all you basically do is you add up the luminosity or the energy given out by both stars, and you then work out where the habitable zone would be for that particular system. So again, around the outside, looks fairly similar. You can also get this zone around a single star. So around a single star, you'd have it like this, and a little bit different, and then it gets a little bit more complicated actually when you consider the second star, because it's not quite that shape. But still, you can have this habitable zone around a single star, and then the two stars orbit each other. So looking at it properly, from a proper study where they actually calculated this out and modelled it, you've got the green area here, which is the habitable zone for a single star. So this doesn't take into consideration the second star. So you've got A and B, which are two stars in the centre. You can calculate this zone purely from the individual star with no consideration for the second star, and that's the green zone. Now, if you then consider both stars together, you get a slightly different shape. So the red zone is when both stars are considered and one of the planets, or the planet is orbiting just one of the stars. And then you get this slightly distorted zone because you've got the consideration or the, the component of the second star actually being considered, which then elongates it towards the other star. Now, if you then move those stars even closer together, it kind of merges into a single habitable zone that is not symmetric in shape. So you can see the green is a single star, but then when you consider both stars together and work out the distances where you would have liquid water on the surface, it merges into this sort of shape here, and it basically encompasses both stars. So it becomes a little bit more interesting then when you do that. And if you actually look at the external one, so if you had an external zone around these two stars, it looks fairly similar to what it would be if you just had a single star, you just kind of combine the two again, but it is a little bit distorted. It's not exactly symmetric, so there's a little bit of distortion there, but still, it's fairly similar to what it would be if it was a single star. So it's more likely that if you had a planet orbiting around the outside of two stars, that's probably going to be your best scenario, because if you think about an orbit of a planet around one of these, a single star, it's going to be moving considerably in and around the habitable zone, so its temperature is probably going to change more so than it would do with this scenario here, as well as being a bit more unstable with its orbit as well. So, even if we find a planet that's habitable around two stars, 
it's not going to be comparable to us because it's going to have unusual seasons. Its weather patterns will be slightly different because you've got two two stars, two suns in the sky. You know, what are your seasons going to look like then? And you might have bigger variations in temperatures due to your season, things like that. So whilst it could be habitable, potentially permanently, not necessarily permanently, but for a long period of time because it stays in the habitable zone, it can still vary in temperature within that habitable zone and then drive quite unusual weather and seasons. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.